and we are now recording. You have a quorum. Hey, hi, folks. I will be um, chairing in Vasu's absence today. Um, one quick announcement. If there are no objections, we're going to put the um, the solar assessment discussion with uh, GZA before the progress report, since Stella is not here today. So, so long as that's OK with um, is it Steve doing the CPACE? No, it's me. Or uh, Don, right, of course, yep. As um, long as that's okay with you, we'll go ahead and do that. It's fine with me. All right, so uh, to start off, I'll do what Vasu usually does and just share quickly our vision and charge and remind everybody, let's see, can you all see that? Now we can. Yep. You can, okay. Just remind everyone that our goals are to make recommendations, our goals and our charge are to make recommendations to town council and to help the town, um, help the town as it transitions in a just environmentally just way to a greenhouse gas free future. Um, to do this, we have divided ourselves into five groups or five individuals working on different aspects of this from heat pumps, um, larger region and state issues, solar issues, transportation, and CPACE, which is aimed at um, a larger uh, multifamily units and, and uh, buildings, larger buildings. Okay, and with that, let's take a review of the minutes. I can share them, I think. I just drag them onto the screen, I think. You should be able to see the minutes from last time. If there are any comments. Who, who is up for taking minutes today? Ah, good question. I believe it's me and I, I preempted everything and I've started already. Where do you go, Dwayne? Confirm, confirm man, that Dwayne, it's- You're the man. Way to go, Dwayne. Ch champion minute taker. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> I have uh, high stakes here. All right, I will continue. Okay, so if there's any comments on the minutes. Stephanie, is it required that we um, vote on minutes or can we do a, what's it called, a consensus sort of thing where as long as there's no objections, we adopt it, we adopt the minutes as are? Typically we take a voice vote, so I don't know about that for the minutes. Okay. So is there, do we need more time to look at this or is there a move to um, accept the minutes? Are there any changes? I move to accept the minutes. Saul's change. Is there a second? Was that I'll Selman? Move. That yeah. was, yeah. And <laughs> Roof seconds that. Okay, so I'm going to do a voice vote in no particular order. Roof? Yes. Rose? I'll come back to you, Andra. Bregger? Yes. Yes. Rose? Yes, yes. Goldner? Yes. Allison? Abstain. Selman? Yes. Drucker? Abstain. Okay. So minutes pass with two abstentions. Okay, so I think we are up to the public comment time. And oh, looks like we have, do we have, um, oh, we have quite a few attendees. So shall we open it up for public comment? How do we, how do, we do that, Stephanie? So um, if anyone has, um, a desire to ask a question or speak to the ECC, please digitally raise your hand and I will allow you to speak. Okay, it does not look like there are any questions or comments at this time. Perhaps at the end. Okay, so now we're going to skip to the solar assessment. I think we have uh, Stephen Lecco here. Is that, am I pronouncing your name correctly? 
and Adrian. Yes. Um, yes, you are. Um, give me one moment and I will share my screen. Excellent. Um, can everyone see? Oh, there we go. You can see the PowerPoint as the full screen? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you for having us. Um, we are working on the Town of Amherst Townwide Solar Assessment um, from GZA, Geo Environmental. Uh, I'm Adrian Dunk. I'm the project manager on this project. Um, I've worked in solar across Massachusetts uh, from a siting um, perspective and also uh, wetlands and natural resources. Um, Stephen Lucko is also on the call with us today, and he is the principal in charge of this project. Uh, he is a planner, and um, he'll be kind of guiding some of our, our work here. And then also a key player on our project team is Jacqueline Claver here at GZA. Um, and she is a GIS uh, specialist. So she will be doing the actual um, data analysis and geospatial um, data uh, procurement. And so I like to think about this project kind of in three phases. Um, we are in the first phase right now, which is gathering data. So we are gathering feedback from you, from the Solar Bylaw Working Group, the town government, um, and then also through direct public particip participation. Um, and the goal of that is to really understand um, what questions the community has and how we can provide information to answer them. Um, and so that that's, that's what we'll do in our second and third phases of the project, which is the second one is mapping. Um, our goal is to have an interactive map-based tool that can be used to identify where solar could be feasible in the town. Um, and so that is gonna be looking largely at um, what existing regulations allow, and then also looking at physical constraints um, across the town. Um, and, and specifically kind of as we've been discussing and refining what this, what this end product may look like, um, we've really clarified around the topic that GZA is doing an analytical exercise to provide information on the feasibility of solar, but not necessarily the suitability. So we're really going to stay out of some of those values-based decision-making um, about would we like it on this type of land or that type of land? Would we like it at this scale or that scale? Um, we're really going to be trying to provide just information on what could be done and leave the town entities to decide and guide what should be done. Um, so paired with that map will be a report. And that report um, is going to be used to characterize the data, what the data says, what the data means, um, and kind of how it can be used in future decision making. And so today our goal is um, to present to you all um, some of our initial questions that we are going to use to kickstart our coordination with the town department heads. Um, we definitely want community input um, throughout this process. And so um, right now we're, we're hoping for some guidance um, from you all so that we have a really productive meeting with our town department heads. Um, so we do ask that if you have questions or feedback on the questions we've put together, that you send that information through Stephanie, um, who'll compile it um, and, and deal with any, if there's conflicting uh, recommendations, she'll kind of sort that all out and get it to us. Um, we also do ask that if you wish to respond to the questions, um, that's great. They may be applicable to you, they may not, but if you wish to respond now, um, again, just send that through writing to Stephanie and she will make sure we get it. Um, so again, we're at this beginning data gathering phase. And so we would like to start working with the town and the department heads um, to understand their 
what they're excited about and also their concerns um, relative to solar development. So we have five questions that they would rate um, strongly disagree to strongly agree that, that largely have to do with their familiarity with solar, um, their understanding about solar targets in town, and then if they are comfortable using a mapping tool, if they would use this in their work. Um, and then we have uh, five more free form questions where they can expand on those topics. Um, and we're, we're really hoping to use this to help guide our conversation and make sure that this final mapping tool that we develop is broadly useful. So I think um, at this time, if, if anyone has, you know, questions on the mission of the project or um, anything related to that, we'd be we'd be happy to to discuss. Um, I see Steve Roof has his hand up. Yes, um, thank you. <clears throat> what after you get the questions, uh, the responses back from town staff? What can you tell us? What the next steps would be, and how these their answers to these questions would direct your next steps? Yes, yes. So we are going to have a meeting, a virtual meeting with the town department heads. And so um, their answers to these questions will help us identify, you know, who's really critical to, to work with versus who's maybe happy to be informed about the project, but doesn't need to be engaged actively. Um, so it'll kind of allow us to see the key players and it will also um, allow us to, you know, we'll better understand the sentiment within the town um, in terms of if there's really specific concerns related to feasibility um, that, that we should be considerate of or, you know, planned improvements in town. If there's going to be infrastructure improvements, um, maybe we should take those into account as we develop our model. Uh, so that's our that's our plan for implementing. And and these are going to be sent to the department heads. How, how many department heads are in the town of Amherst staff? I think there's about uh, I want to say thirteen or fourteen. Okay, so department heads, but not not employees working under these department heads. Is that right? Not at this stage. Okay, even though some of those employees may be at the sort of the the nuts and bolts stage of developing next typically step. yeah typically what will happen i mean the staff that's involved with that are aware of all of this and are being informed as we go along but also um typically if a department head is working directly with their staff on these issues they will forward them to their staff to get their feedback and incorporate them in their response thank you you're welcome um, I see Laura, your hand is up. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, it sounds like the plan you have is a good one. Um, I think the last point you made about other infrastructure projects happening, I think that's a really important question. I don't see where that's included on these questions yet. So I don't know if that mm -hmm. needs to be a additional question. Um, yeah, I think that's certainly something we would, as we facilitate a conversation with them, we'll get there. Okay. But um, yeah. these are kind of the, the screening questions before we discuss. OK. Um, and then a follow or, or second question is, mm -hmm. I understand the um, sort of reason it would be helpful to um, get the answers to those two. So in the blue box, the first two questions, um, but that seems to go a little bit counter to what you said previously, where you were like, we're just showing you where solar is available. We're not commenting on sort of the political feasibility of solar. Um, so just wondering if that may be sending a confusing message. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying there. Um, I think in terms of asking concerns and excited, it's very possible we'll get many comments and responses that 
are more on that political side. Um, but we might get some, we do want to keep these broad and open-ended so that people have the opportunity to, to raise concerns um, or things they're excited about uh, <laughs> that aren't on our radar. Um, so I think we'll definitely couch these when we send them to the department heads, um, kind of how I did to you guys about that that feasibility aspect only. Um, but I do want these questions, they're, they're intentionally somewhat broad um, to solicit a wide range of feedback. Yeah, this is, this is kind of independent of the GIS mapping tool exercise that we're gonna be doing. So just because somebody says, for example, I don't wanna see any solar on agricultural fields as a response to one of these questions or as a concern, I mean, we're going to note that, uh, but our analysis is going to be purely objective. You know, if the if the existing regulations allow for something like that, it, they're going to be shown as a potential solar development. But that doesn't then that that GIS information is going to be given to you know the town and then the town's going to make its own decisions as as to like the solar bylaw group is going to make their own decisions as to how they craft regulations to regulate these things. Mm -hmm. And I think to some of the things like you know what am I most or, or or what are concerns relative to the solar development that you know, the department heads might have a unique perspective on maybe have to do with um, workload or traffic in town or some some other aspect that isn't necessarily on our radar from a, a, a values-based perspective, but it might be on um, like, oh, well, we'd need more building inspectors if we're going to do rooftop. Um, so to, to get some of that information to help um, brought in the discussion with you guys in the solar bylaw working group so that the town feels kind of prepared to move forward. I see uh, Andra has her hand up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so it seems to me that it, um, it would be useful to know um, to have them reflect on not just themselves, but also, you know, members of their staff um, mm -hmm. on the, the staff familiarity with solar, as well as, um, you know, I understand that the um, you, you know, maybe it's just a wording thing. How many solar development in town change your resources or work responsibilities, human or physical? Well, department heads' physical responsibilities probably aren't going to change, but their staffs will. Mm -hmm. So it might just be a wording thing. Yeah, I think that's that's a really good point. And we do, we want to ask <laughs> not just about the self, about the about the department and the team. Thank you. Other questions? Steve? Yeah, I, I guess I have questions about next steps. And Laurie or Stephanie, you can um, punt this to another time if you think it's appropriate. But I'm curious about the GCA um, involvement under that first square gather, uh, the direct part public participation and in broad strokes what that public participation may look like and will that be trying to get at the, the sentiment across town of the suitability of solar that that, that value judgment aspect so in our um, contract we have included efforts to um, do broad outreach across town it includes um, developing survey, um, translation services, and then for that survey, um, sending out mailings about it, hosting it online, and then also um, in-person and virtual public participation workshops. Um, so 
that's kind of the, the general scope of that public participation. Um, currently, it, it can be refined as we move closer to it. Um, yeah. Stephanie, do you want to jump in? I see your hand up. <laughs> yeah, thanks, I don't Adrian. want to go off course. No, yeah. that was great. Um, no, I think so. The reason why um, this was included in their scope of work was because we wanted an independent body to gather that information. And we've had this discussion with the Solar Bylaw Working Group, too, who is also very keen on doing outreach and guiding outreach, but we are very clear the town wants it to be as independent um, outreach as possible, and that that information would then be shared with the respective committees. So ECAC and Solar Bylaw Working Group will certainly have an opportunity to review the materials that will be going out to the public um, to weigh in on if there's something, you know, additional, but the idea is really to keep it um, an independent and not biased approach to outreach, if that is clear. So, so if I can summarize, it sounds like, um, like a GZA will be collecting the information needed to make that value judgment, but not themselves making any sort of judgment that's of course up to the town correct um, and that information will be reflected in the report not okay. on the mapping but on the in the report okay i like to think of it as as we're here to listen to what your questions are what the solar bylaws group's questions are and then gather information that can be used to answer those questions but that we're not going to be answering them directly in terms of um you know, recommendations. All right, are there any other questions at this time? All right, wonderful. Well, we look forward to working with you all. We will certainly be back again in the future to continue coordinating. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Adrian and Stephen. Okay, so next on the agenda then is going back to the, um, uh, where to go? To the um, updates or the uh, reports rather, uh, where did I put it? Ah, I lost it. Oh dear. Looks like I accidentally, there it is, the progress reports. Um, CPACE and Stella's not here, so we won't have the transportation update today, but can we get an update on the CPACE? Sure. Um, yeah, that would be me. Um, and it's it's going to be very brief. I, I did finally, oh, I apologize. My office phone is ringing and I don't know how to mute it. So, um, God, I'm technologically challenged. Oh, here we go. No? Yeah, did it. Um, there's a little button, obviously, with a microphone and a across it, so it worked. <laughs> um, in any event, it, I don't have a lot to report. I did manage to finally actually physic, not physically, but crossing emails, connect with Claudia Pasmani at, um, at the chamber, and she and I will be meeting next week so I can uh, solicit input from her. Um, you know, in the business community in moving forward with any sort of availability or implementation of a, of a CPACE program. Um, I do intend, although my schedule got pretty uh, crowded, to get together or to communicate with Stephanie about the, the next step we talked about in my last report, which is putting together some sort of not flyer, but some sort of information sheet uh, to be available uh, at town hall for individuals who are seeking uh, applications for building permits. Um, I've also reached out to um, bid, but twice, but I haven't heard back from her. So maybe Claudia will be able to um, connect me with uh, the head of bid. That's that's really all I have to report.
Lori, you're muted. Sorry. Any questions for Don or other input on the CPACE project? Um, I just wonder if um, Laura and Steve, who each uh, interviewed, you know, either the chamber person or the bid person um, in way back <laughs> ancient times, um, if you might be able to help with Don with that reaching out. I, I did not meet the, the bid person. I interviewed other people in town way back then. Okay, and uh, Jesse? I, I, I know Mrs. Bid and uh, the, I could pop downstairs and, 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 uh, and say, and ask if if they might look to your emails. I think I'd be very comfortable making that that move if that's okay. I think Don just said he has a meeting also scheduled though. I I do with Claudia at the chamber, but not with oh okay his bid. Um, and and for some reason, it, it took a while for Claudia to get back to me. She apologized. She, you know. I guess with vacation schedules and stuff, my emails to her went to some dark place. Um, but she did find them and responded, and she and I have now emailed back and forth to set up a, a time next week. But I'd love it, Jesse, if uh, if you could help me connect with the head of bid. Yeah, I'll stick my head in there tomorrow. Um, okay, at lunch. Just for the minutes, um, does, what's Claudia's last name? Pazmani, P-A-Z-M-A-N-Y. Gotcha. Thank you. Anyone else uh, comments, questions? Okay, in that case, I think- Sorry, uh, sorry, I have my hand up. Oh, I'm um, sorry. That's okay. Sorry. I just wanted to say too that um, I could also do a virtual introduction online if that would be helpful as a follow up. So if Jesse, you want to stick your head in and then I'll do a virtual and that way it just emphasizes that we're really trying to make a connection. That'd be great. Sure. All right, anyone else? Okay, in that case, on to number six, which I think is staff updates. Um, I guess that would be me. <laughs> and um, uh, I feel like right now is one of those busy times of the year where green communities report is due. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of different projects going on. So I don't really have anything and I apologize. I don't have anything prepared um, for tonight, but um, I guess if you have any specific questions of any specific work that's going on, the Solar Bylaw Working Group, I'm sure Duane will give an update um, on that uh, at some point. So I, I would leave that to him rather than coming from me, but um, you know, efforts are moving along. I will say that I put together, um, and I will share this with the group. I just wanted to wait till I had it reviewed by folks here in town hall, but I put together um, the allocations for the, um, FY23 sustainability budget. I put together a spreadsheet of those um, allocations and that was um, a result of some capital projects that are moving forward with various departments. Um, some of which we were going to try to apply for green communities funding for. And I think I said at the last meeting, we weren't able to apply for the green communities grant because the consultant did not get us our information in time which was sort of frustrating, but at the same time might be okay because what we would really like to move towards is um, moving town hall off fossil fuels and getting a heat pump system. And so I've reached out to Ben Weil um, at UMass who is willing to meet with us um, to sort of put something together uh, and to sort of identify the appropriate technology for town hall. Ben's a bit of a wizard if you don't know him. He's pretty amazing. So um, even our building commissioner said, yes, I absolutely want to be on that meeting because Ben is amazingly interesting to listen to. So um, so I'm excited actually about that. So even though we're not applying for green communities funding this time, 
Um, we will shoot for the spring round. If for some reason it's not going to be ready for spring, it will definitely be ready for the fall um, application round. So it's coming, but again, we'd really like to make town hall sort of be the first fossil fuel free building in town. Questions for Stephanie, other comments? I have a question. Go ahead, Andrea, and then Steve. Um, so I'd like to just hear, just maybe I know, but maybe we don't know what um, you're reporting on um, green community funds. What have they been used oh, for? It's in the just last an it's an annual report. It's just an update of um, where we are with our um, energy efficiency in town. When you when you sign up to become a green community, um, the goal is to have a twenty percent reduction in energy use below your baseline year, which um, when you apply to become a green community, you lay it all out and it seems like there it is and that's how you can do it. And um, it's been very challenging for many communities, Northampton included, um, to, to be able to reach that target goal because things change, technology changes, um, various factors change, um, you know, over time when you're actually trying to even implement your projects they don't necessarily achieve the goals that you've set out in the beginning. So um, the annual report is basically just to sort of update the state for the state to kind of keep tabs on where communities are with their energy efficiency goals. Um, so that's, it's just a, a, you know, an annual reporting requirement. It's what keeps us in quote unquote good standing and allows us to apply for funding. So if I don't submit the report, on time, then we can't apply for funding for spring or the fall. So if um, we didn't have a green communities grant recently, right? Right. Then, then um, is it pretty much the same as the last annual report? No, not necessarily because things change, use changes. I mean, it could be that one year you don't meet the goals in the next year you might or you know it's just a sort of a way to track our efficiency from year to year mm -hmm. does, does so report, not... sorry i'm just wondering uh, sort of following up with andre does the report appear anywhere on the website or anything like that is it something we can we can just look at or no i can certainly share it uh, make it part of a packet when it's completed and it's been accepted i i don't want to post it until it's been accepted sure okay because sometimes there are things like there's additional questions they have about certain things. And that I will give you a heads up that sometimes that is months after you've submitted. <laughs> so I have had instances where I might submit in November, but the questions don't even come to me until February or March. And so, you know, it can be quite a bit of a, a gap in time before that happens. Is, is there like a summary chart or something? There is, but you know, again, I, I wouldn't because sometimes there are even changes to that. So I wouldn't submit it until I know it's been approved by green communities. And now Steve, I think you had a question. Yeah, on a different topic, Stephanie, I, I meant to ask this the last couple of meetings, but it always slipped in my mind. Uh, is there any progress with the uh, family outreach um, plan to do that um, tenant outreach? supported yes. by the Empower grant? Yes, we, and not hugely so, but I would say the contract is finally getting to the point where we, like we've had to revise it a couple of times when family outreach has taken a look, there have been things that they wanted changed. And then the procurement officer was out of the office um, for like a week. So we, we've had a bit of back and forth and a lot of it's been around timing of you know, either family outreach contact person isn't available, or then our procurement isn't available, or I wasn't available. So it's really taken some time, but um, I think we finally got the contract in shape. And um, in fact, I just had communication about it with the procurement officer today, and she's going to get it out to me, I think, tomorrow. And I will send it along to family outreach, but then they have to get it um, reviewed and signed on their end. And it's because it's not family outreach themselves that sign, it's their parent organization that signs. Um, 
so, which is why we had to sort of make some adjustment adjustments to like we were originally identifying monthly billing they would prefer quarterly billing it was like those kinds of details that kept you know getting adjusted and changed so well i'm glad it's moving forward like <laughs> it's moving forward <laughs> yes me too and you're muted all right just for the minutes what's the the name of that organization the family family outreach of amherst gotcha cool okay well, and then I had another independent separate question. And I, I believe Stephanie, the, the um, solar on the landfill is in operation. Is that true? It is, it actually has gone live and we're just working to schedule the ribbon cutting event, but it is oh. live. Um, okay. Yeah, it's pretty, um, it, it feels very surreal to me, but <laughs> it's finally live. <clears throat> it's like um, almost a career achievement for you. <laughs> oh, it most certainly is not almost, it is <laughs> for sure. Well, don't retire now. Um, <laughs> do, is there um, a public portal that we can see production from that? I, I, I don't know that it's yet. I don't know that we've done that yet. Um, I mean, I think that was one of the things we had talked about, and I'll have to thank you for reminding me about that, Steve, because we had talked about it at one point. I just don't know. Um, I'm making a note now. I've kind of forgotten about that piece. What The reason I ask is that, in my experience managing the systems at Hampshire College, is I have to watch the production of those systems, and if something happens, the company running it doesn't necessarily know. So like I have to monitor and then if something doesn't work right, I have to let the company know and then they'll fix it fairly quickly, but they're not always monitoring as fast as they perhaps should be. And hopefully the town has a company that's more on top of that. But um, I would personally just love to look at the output and, and, and study it. Yep, I, I will ask about that, Steve, I'll follow up. Okay, thank you. I'm all done with questions. I rest my case. Anyone else? Anna has her hand up. Oh, yes, Andra. Um, I, um, hold on. It was actually Anna in the uh, attendees list oh, that has her hand up oh, as well. Oh, yes, we'd like to hear from Anna too. Anna, oh, you can let well. Anna go and I'll try to remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> Anna. Stephanie, can we let Anna in? Oh, um, oops, sorry. Anna, and just real quick, Anna, before you start, I, I, sure, sure. I told I told Stephanie earlier I have to actually depart in a few minutes. Um, I can't believe you're going to miss see. what I'm about to say, Jesse. No, I'm going to stay for that, but I'm going to oh, be okay, okay. in the middle, unless it's super <laughs> offensive and then I'm walking out. In fact, oh, well, maybe because of what know. you say that I leave. <laughs> no, I'll take it personally. I thank you all, obviously, for all the hard work and have a great two weeks. So um, really quickly, there's not a ton, I mean, as anybody who's been watching us knows, there's been a ton happening at um, council. However, one thing that is coming up that I wanted to put on your radar and maybe actually ask you to commit some time to in your next meeting is that we are about to launch into setting town manager goals for the next year. Um, and if you've read the past year's town manager goals, he has he's had specific sections for climate action and they often spell out specific actions that are in the CARP that um, we then ask him to kind of move forward on. So one thing that's come up pretty recently is some interpretation of the CARP that seems to be not disputed, but just questions about what's the actual priority from that document. Um, so something that might be really helpful is if ECAC could pick a couple priority areas that y'all want us or want me and other counselors to advocate for in that goal setting process. Um, that would be, I'm going to speak personally because I don't ever speak on behalf of the council, but I know that would be hugely helpful to hear from y'all which parts you'd like to see us move on in the next year that require town manager action, which most, if not all of them, require town manager action. So I'm happy to answer any questions about that. I do not have an exact timeline for you yet, though. I can answer that right away. Didn't we have a document that prioritizes somewhere? I, remember I thought you had a you had like a rubric or a sheet I think that you'd been working on. I don't have that, but um, we, we never. And I don't know how up to date. Yeah, yeah. We, we never uh, finished that process. Got it. 
So now I don't know if anyone else wants to call on questions of those. I'm happy to, but with Stephanie and then Laura. Yeah, yeah. So that um, document is a draft. And um, I was saying that it really can't be, it, it was sort of the committee um, goals, but it needed to be merged with what the town had identified as well. Um, and I think Vasu and I had talked about working on that together and we just haven't merged those two things yet. Um, there's just been a lot going on, but I think we'll get, we totally. can, that sort of alerts me to making sure that that happens because mm -hmm. I do have a draft document that's been vetted here at town hall. It's, and again, these are things that we're identifying internally that are also, you know, they're from the CARP. So it's not like we're, we're not working from that document, just things that we see coming up and potential funding streams. Because even if the committee identifies something, it doesn't necessarily mean we absolutely can do it. So it's oh, just absolutely. good to merge those two things together to see what's really feasible. So um, yeah, and, and, and I can do that. Sure, and and to be clear, these are the council's goals for the town manager. They're not the only things the town manager will do. And I, Stephanie, I know you know this, but just to make it clear to everybody else, um, these are just the council's goals. And so this is one where, you know, the, the council is seeking your your advice on on elements of um, or I as as the, as your liaison, am saying that I'd really love to have y'all have some input on this. And so um, if you have anything, it's not a guarantee it'll make it in, but this would be a great time for y'all to have some input on elements you'd like to see included in the in the goals that I can bring forward then to the is it, table. Is there a timeline we should know about? Not yet. I don't know yet, but I, as soon as I get you one, as soon as I get one, I will tell you. Okay. And Laura, I think you have a question. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Two questions for you. One, would you be, would it be possible for you to send Stephanie so she can give to us the last year's goals so we can see them and see what they were? Um, yes. Thank you. And then my second question was, and maybe at this point I just dreamed this, I don't know, but I swear <laughs> at some point, last year, the council made some kind of declaration or something that, or maybe it was before your group started. It was before my time, but I know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, that Paul was gonna need to give quarterly updates to the council on the progress of the CARP. And mm -hmm. that, I don't think that's happened. Um, so is this something like, first of all, how do we find if I did, if I made that up or not? Secondly, I actually um, if I didn't make it up, can we put this in a bowl or does it need to be some other type of I don't know that it needs things. to be a goal. I think it can just be something we ask for. Um, the goals might be a little bit bigger than that. Um, I think that can just be something that we ask for. I have searched for that um, particular reference and I'm not saying you did make it up. However, I cannot find reference to it. Um, so I will keep searching. And uh, in the meantime, though, I think it's something that we could be that could reasonably be asked for. And um, it's another reason to really make sure those specific elements that you would like to see happen are in the goals. And it doesn't mean done, right? Like I know one of the goals for the past year was to make progress on the, um, um, oh my God, what's the thing called? The municipality, joint municipality agreement. You know what I'm talking about? Please, someone help me finish the sentence. The Joint CCA. Powers Agreement and the CCA. Thank you. Yes, the CCA, that's what it was, um, was to make progress on that. It didn't say it had to be done, but we wanted to see substantial progress. So they can be broad, but I think one of the things that we've seen this year is that it said make progress on enacting recommendations from the climate action from the CARP. And without prioritization of that, there's been some discrepancy on what are the priority areas. It's come up, for example, most recently with the zero waste project. Um, some folks saying that that was a priority in the CARP, some folks saying, no, it wasn't. And, um, and it takes, it will take staff time. And so it's, you know, this is the goals is one method that the town manager uses to prioritize projects and staff time. And so it is important that we are clear and that's my opinion in those goals. Other I guess Andres. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to say that um, there are some things that the committee ought to do that um, 
and advising the town council. That's what Anna is asking for is, is um, our opinions about priorities um, for the council to consider um, that should not be combined with the staff's priorities. It should be ours alone um, because we're the representatives of the residents in town. And um, there are other times when it needs to be combined. But I, I think that we should go through a process where we set our priorities and it may not be what ends up um, happening, but we should put them out there. I also want to be mindful that this was not on your agenda. And so I'm, I, I'm also just, I'm happy to keep answering questions, but um, I, I think my main goal today was to get this on a, a future agenda for y'all. And I'm happy to answer any questions, but I, I'm, I think we're treading kind of close to a lot of deliberation on something that people didn't have warning that we were going to talk about. <laughs> Um, but other questions, uh, uh, Stephanie and Laura. I don't know which of you was first. Sorry. Laura can go first. I'll go after. Yeah, okay. I guess I just wanted to respond to Andre's point, and, and I agree we can have this as a separate meeting item. I disagree, Andra. I think we prioritize what we need. It's in the CARP. It's the it's the plan out to twenty twenty five. We can't do any more than that. Like we can pick the five things we're doing. That's what we're doing right now, but the staff need to implement it. Like we personally can't implement it. So like, I feel like we keep running around every six months, the same cycle of like, we need priorities. We come up with a list, <laughs> you know, like, I just don't know that we have, I don't think we can prioritize more than we already have. And we prioritize the things we're working on right now. And, I guess I just feel like there needs to be another level of implementation that either we can ask for through these goals or otherwise figure out how to get done. Like, I just think it's a waste of our time to continue to try to prioritize things mm -hmm. that we do, like, we, because we can't do what the, like, we can't force the town to do or we can't, we, the town needs to prioritize what the town is doing. Well, so we're the ECAC and um, we have prioritized what ECAC is going to do. And um, what Anna is asking is our opinions as residents for the town manager's goals, which they will then, you know, town council will then debate but they're at yeah i completely agree with input that input as residents not as residents who only advise the town manager indirectly this is another way for us to move things forward and the town manager's goals are really critical cuz that's what happens and oh i agree but i don't think that like so on Anna was saying one of his goals was to implement the CARP, implement the priorities of the CARP. And what I'm hearing her say is that the council doesn't know how to decide whether he did that or not because no, no, no. they don't know what Sorry. the priorities of the CARP are. I can clarify that a little bit more maybe. Um, I'm saying we don't know which parts of the CARP we're supposed to start with um, and which ones are, are item one on the list versus item 10 on the list, right? Like. So implementing the CARP, as y'all know better than I do, is, is a multi-year process here. And so uh, what we need, and this is again, in my opinion, which uh, this was written by the prior council, I believe that goal was way too broad and not actually helpful um, in the sense of, of tracking it, but also in the sense of where to start. So it can be implement the CARP, but then a follow-on needs to be by prioritizing X, Y, Z um, and, and those specific actions. That's that's what I mean when I say setting priorities is like, which ones do you want to see done in the next year? Because um, the whole CARP can't be done in the next year, but what are the, you know, which are the elements that you'd like to see us put on his plate first, knowing that it may not get through, but I can try. 
Yeah, so we can do that, but I would actually ask you to look back to the report we gave to the town council, which does lay out, I believe, our priorities that we wanted to have done this year. Um, And that should be enough for you to look at to help rate him against what has happened this year. Thanks. Can you send that to me? Um, Or can you tell me what date it was on? Or Stephanie can find it. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie. So if I could jump in now, I just wanted to say that, yes, I can forward, I'll make a note right now, send last year's report. Um, So making a note. And also, um, I wanted to say that the 2025 goals are absolutely the priority. I mean, when, when the, when the plan was developed, the goal was to meet the 2025 um, reduction goal. And so that is the first set of priorities. And it's, I think it's pretty clearly spelled out within the document. Um, But then also on top of that, there was the report that can also substantiate what the committee was identifying as some goals that they, that they saw. Um, So those things, you know, I can certainly send um, both, you know, the report and the last year's um, ECAC report to you, Anna, just so that you have sure, ease of access. Um, so there's that. And then I just wanted to sort of um, go back. I think Laura um, sort of expressed a lot of what I was going to respond to with um, Andrew's comment, but also I did want to say that, uh, you know, I think, um, I, you know, we are a committee and I am, I, I am a part of this committee. Um, I'm not specifically a voting member, but I am a part of this committee. And part of the reason is because we sort of talk about those priorities and we talk about those goals, but it's also um, as the staff person who, especially now as director can oversee um, a lot of the implementation. I mean, that is my role to sort of keep us um, informed about what's, you know, where we are with things, what's possible, what we can prioritize given what you all want to prioritize. So I just want to make sure that it's it's not necessarily ECAC in a vacuum. And I think their their requests were specifically for the committee um, to identify priorities. So that that's all I guess I just wanted to say again that we're working together and that's what makes us more effective is working together. So I actually have to drop, I'm sorry, I have to go to my other um, my other job. Now, uh, Laura, I guess, Laura, if you have one more, I can stand for like another minute or so, but then I, I do have to run and I'm sorry. No, it's not okay. All right, well, thank you very much, Anna. Thanks. Okay, other staff update things? Should we move on to ECAC updates? Yes, I have nothing else. Okay, ECAC updates. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Okay, uh, if you remember last meeting, <clears throat> I, you guys sort of gave me approval to take some thoughts to the town, the CRC developing the rental registration bylaw. Um, I submitted those to CRC and the word I got back from Andy Joe is that they will be considered uh, as the next CRC meeting, which is November 3rd. So if folks on the committee or out there in the public want to listen in, that meeting is uh, CRC 430 on November 3rd uh, next week. Um, And that'll probably be a a reading and discussion of the latest amendments amongst the CRC. And then I believe subsequent steps are to begin to discuss that both in other public forums, as well as bring it to the full council for um, review. That was one announcement. The second is uh, coming up on Friday this week is a seminar, a webinar on natural climate solutions that might be of interest to, again, both folks on this committee and to the public. And I thought if, if, if it's okay, Lori, I might just quickly share my screen that shows the description of that. Yeah, that would be great. Um... I actually wanted to ask Stephanie if it's ever possible for us to get a chat function in this so we can actually share links. No, never possible. Okay. No, okay. well, no, we can't now. Um, yeah, in part, it's a security reason, so no. Okay, well, here's the the um, screen I think you're seeing. This is 
um, put on by the EESI, which is the, are you seeing my screen okay? Yes. Okay, a Environmental and Energy Study Institute in Washington, DC. And they give these their briefings to members of Congress and their staff. This one is on natural climate solutions and it's part of their series uh, titled What Congress Needs to Know About COP27. That's the next um, international conference, uh, conference of the parties, the, the international climate negotiations. And this particular webinar on Friday will be about natural climate solutions, both the international stage as well as across the United States. And it, it looks really interesting to me. Um, and just scrolling down, some of the speakers are a rep from the Nature Conservancy, another one from the American Forests, Pew Charitable Trust, Environmental Defense Funds. Um, so it looks like a diverse group of speakers. And then just to highlight the location for that, I think you can just go to www.eesi.org slash livecast, in one word, livecast, and that should take you there. It's 1 p.m. on Friday at that address. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, other updates? If not, I have an update. Oh, Dwayne? Yeah, it's always tough when you're taking notes, but um, uh, yeah, so I can give an update on the ECAC, sorry, on the uh, other meeting, other one, uh, on the Solar Bylaw Working Group meeting uh, that we had last week. I think it's on opposite weeks of, of, uh, of the ECAC. Um, <clears throat> we had a, a good meeting. Um, we had actually had a, a very similar presentation from GZA uh, on the uh, solar assessment work and some questions back and forth of, of similar vein in terms of uh, of um, um, what what the purpose and outcomes of were were, were for the um, uh, the staff uh, department head survey and then how uh, what what the um, public participation would look like uh, we did then also hear a um, one of our working group members um, Laura uh, Pellegrini or something along those lines. I apologize, dude. Um, her last name, but she's a uh, obviously a working group member, but also a um, a very experienced solar developer, um, and so she was able to uh, start a presentation that's going to be continued at the next meeting uh, to inform um, members of the working group uh, as well as uh, staff. It's both Stephanie and Christine Bestrup. Um, on, uh, on on the real ins and outs of, of solar development, solar development, particularly you know lar larger ground mounted solar development, uh, and um, some of the things that I think are important for um, uh, the committee, the working group to consider uh, in their deliberations as we get into the writing of the bylaws themselves. Um, we did um, actually, uh, you know, start start really um, talking about the uh, logistics and strategies for actually writing the bylaws uh, and bringing them together. Um, and um, fortunately, we have great help from the planning department in the town. Um, they will actually be um, taking the lead, um, as is their nature and expertise in drafting the bylaw. Uh, in, in bylaw language. Uh, I think that's super helpful because none of us are really coming up at it from that perspective. Uh, and um, with basically um, then ability for the working group to um, review, respond, and fill in all the gaps that will be necessary to fill in uh, with regard to the level of of uh, what what's included in the bylaw, what's considered, and and then obviously the specifications within the bylaw that really gives it it gives its flavor with regard to the stringency or um, leniency, I guess, on on uh, on ability to uh, and processes for um, con developing, constructing, permitting so um, solar. Uh, so that's that's in the in, in in sort of we have a process in place. That's going to be the work of the working group for the coming um, many many months uh, to get through that 
uh, process, uh, Christina started us off with a an outline uh, of what what uh, is would be generally included in the in the uh, in the bylaw as she sees it. That's subject to to change as we go along, uh, and then the work of the working group will be really to hone in, deliberate, and do some research uh, on other bylaws and uh, external research on on how to draw some of these uh, or how to come up with some of the um, specifications. Um, so. Um, that's sort of an update from from ECAC. I mean, sorry, from uh, from the uh, sort of bylaw working group. Um, uh, I know uh, Steve was was uh, in attendance, um, participating. Um, we also made it clear, similarly, on the on the uh, working group, there's a lot of interest in the solar assessment as well. Um, but um, you know, we tried to make it clear, as we have in in this group, that that technical assessment is a tool for us for both of our bodies to to work with it's not setting priorities or preferences the the mapping itself is a is a tool for us to um uh to um, inform our decision making and so forth um and um uh and so i think there's we're we're, we're getting a better understanding of what to expect and and make you and how to make use of the of the uh of the solar assessment mapping exercise. Um, yeah, Stephanie, muted. Thanks, Dwayne. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, Laura's last name is Paglia Rulo. <laughs> just okay. to sort of help you with that. I usually have um, it <laughs> written out in front of me, but okay. Yeah. It's okay. Um, and then also, um, I just also wanted to remind this group that there will be a point at which I'm sure Dwayne will bring the draft probably via me to all of you to review and comment and weigh in on. So, um, you know, I think your expertise will be looked to the reason why there is this group, the Solar Bylaw Working Group, um, at least four members represent other committees. And so um, yeah. those committees are, you know, their expertise is, is needed and wanted to weigh in at, at a certain point when they get to a draft. I mean, obviously not now, but at some point they will look to you. Other questions or comments or staff updates? Or I did, I did have one more update, uh, which is a, a point of interest, nothing to do with the working group, uh, but uh, just in my my, my day job. Um, and people may know the, the company, and I'm not here to, at all advocating for a, a specific company, but this, this company is a little bit different. Um, and many of us may know about the company called Energy Sage, uh, which provides... Um, a really useful service in the marketplace. They are not solar developers. Uh, they consider themselves sort of like the kayak of solar kayak for or travelocity or whatever they are, or, or I guess kayak that sort of just um, is a is a energy sage basically works with um, and get uh, approves vets and approve solar developers to meet their um, criteria. Uh, and then prov provides uh, a service to homeowners, typically residential scale, uh, people interested in going, putting solar on their roof to um, get um, uh, very comparable quotes from uh, different companies uh, without engaging with the companies until the, the um, homeowner opts to select one or, or more to um, work with uh, based on these quotes. Um, and what was interesting, what, what, what I learned, which I think is, is maybe more interesting than that for this group, is that they are about to launch a very similar service for heat pumps, uh, for residential heat pumps. I, know. I, told, I told him my, my son is just going through this process now. I was also thinking of you, Lori, uh, <laughs> uh, of going through this process. And, you know, we are very you know, we're the, in the 99th percentile of knowledgeable people uh, and still have a hard time navigating around the heat pump market. Uh, and so this, we'll see how it turns out, but they're about to launch something similar uh, to uh, provide this type of service for the heat pump market as well. Uh, so it's something that um, UMass was actually interested in in, um, uh, in in what they were doing. Dwayne, I just shelled out 50 bucks to Abode today to compare three quotes, so. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, other updates? Sorry. 
Um, yeah, so in my role as bringing the state issues home, um, there's a big move in the um, climate movement and um, also, you know, from the results of the climate bill that was passed in the last session um, for municipalities to take actions in order to electrify um, the buildings town-wide, um, not just municipal buildings, all buildings. And as you probably know, there's a statewide stretch code and we cannot write our own stretch code, but there's several different actions that we could take. And this is an example of something that we as a committee might say, this will really move our CARP goals forward um, that wouldn't, you know, we would be the ones to know about and to decide which might be the best option or just let the town council decide. But um, I think at a future meeting, it would be good for us to delve into the differences between adopting the new specialized uh, stretch code um, versus or in addition to um, filing a home rule petition to be one of uh, the pilot towns um, to get uh, um, to basically make our own code <laughs> um, and or uh, changing the policy that is currently, that, that is the current policy um, to asking Berkshire Gas not to lift their moratorium. So I think of all of those as possible abilities for Amherst to um, both lead Is and take um, you know a strong action that would make a big difference systemically. Uh, Andre, is Berkshire considering lifting the moratorium? Um, not recently, no. But our current policy, as of when they last were thinking of it, was please do. Ah, I see. Okay, you know we should definitely consider that then. All right, thanks. I, I agree this is probably something for an agenda item sometime soon um, to think about the different possibilities and then, and then recommend one of them to the council. Um, so maybe that's something for our meeting next time. Um, other updates? If not, I have one. So um, we were hoping that we would have our first education series on heat pumps and envelope issues today. Um, I've done a lot of work, but I have yet to, here, here's what's happened. First of all, uh, I spoke with Vasu and we decided to change the target date to start these, this education series to be the next meeting, November 9th. The idea being that if we have the first of the month, um, we miss Thanksgiving and we miss Christmas. So we could have one in November and one in December and, and then one in January. Whereas otherwise we would certainly have, a, have to skip uh, November and December. So we're trying for November 9th. Now I have contacted a bunch of different people. I contacted Lorenzo Macaluso at CET. Thanks to Stephanie um, about uh, envelopes presentation. He may not be able to make it, but he's trying to find someone for us, possibly for November 9th, but I'm still waiting on getting hearing back from him. I can't, contacted uh, Dana Fisher at Mitsubishi about heat pump presentations, haven't gotten a reply. Um, now, in the interim, I went to a really excellent, excellent presentation, the best I've seen so far on heat pumps and incentives, um, called Heat Pumps, the What, Where, and How Much, put on by the Green Energy Alliance and Abode Energy. 
Um, I invited the speakers, but they have a substantial fee. And I think that Stephanie is also, they also offer a heat pump advocates training class, which I would dearly love to take. Um, that I think Stephanie is already negotiating with them about getting this class and getting as part of some other um, deal with CET, I think, right? Um, Sorry, no. Um, we're we're talking with CET about the heat pump program, um, and there may be elements of that as part of the discussion with them. I'm just asking them to provide a quote to us. So, okay, they're not related. I just wanted to be careful about the conversation we're having with one group, and also we can't we can't just launch a program with oh, yeah. with them without a contract, and so we can't just do that. Right. Right. Um, it just looks like the heat pump advocacy program that they do is exactly the one that you sent me a flyer for. So I think there's at least some overlap there. But um, uh, in any case, uh, what I'm going to suggest, and this is what I wanted input for, um, is maybe the thing to do if I can't find a speaker for November 9th, uh, is to watch as a group this heat pump presentation, at least the first 40 minutes of it, and then field questions from folks. I think between the bunch of us ECAC members, we can probably answer most questions, um, especially if you have a look at the presentation in advance so you know what's coming. Um, so I think, uh, or even if not, um, that might be one idea just to have a you know, invite people in to watch this presentation and then have a discussion afterwards. Um, I'd like to know what folks think about that. And I'm also still looking for suggestions for speakers. Um, and finally, there was one other update I want, I'll get back to, I wanna get your input on some of this, but the only other update I had was that I also went to an excellent pre uh, presentation I think Steve was also there by Charlie Herrick on retrofits without displacement. That was really eye-opening for me um, and talked a little bit about something I hadn't even thought about at all, which is the need for, uh, one of the things that struck me, there were a lot of things, but one of the things that struck me was the need for contracts and doing any sort of a program where you're funding uh, somebody to do an energy transition, you want to have a contract in place that makes sure, you know, I've been wondering, how do we make sure this is done in a just way? Well, the way you do it in a just way is you have a contract in place that says, you know, during the course of this, this um, project and for a couple of years afterwards, nobody gets evicted, rents are strictly controlled, and, um, uh, and the housing, if affordable, stays affordable, right? So uh, some sort of, and they had, they had, uh, if I remember right, he said he, they were going to distribute sample contracts. Um, so that was a really interesting presentation. And I think particularly useful, it was, it was designed for, for folks working for the municipality. So Stephanie, I don't know if you've seen that or not. Um, you may know I, wasn't, I wasn't able to, but if you get that information, definitely forward it to me. I will. That would I'll be great you. to have. Yes. Thank yeah. you. So. I was hoping to get some input from folks on more speakers, more places to go. I was thinking of just reaching out to the head of local energy advocates, for example, and, and, uh, and um, maybe some folks at BEA to get suggestions for speakers. But a lot of these speakers are in great demand, as it turns out, and have fees associated with their, there aren't enough people doing this sort of work. <laughs> so what do you think about the idea of having a, just watching a presentation together and then having a panel? discussion. I wonder if um, you might curate it for us. So maybe skip some so that it's not the full 40 minute presentation. Oh, it's a really cohesive. This is why I yeah. like this presentation. Mm -hmm. Did you see it, Andra? No. It is extremely cohesive and exactly mm -hmm. what you want to know if you're trying to put a heat pump in. I learned a lot and I've been at this for months now. <laughs> It's it's very dense and uh, right to the point, and um, there was very little in it that I would want to cut out. Um, it was two speakers in the forty minutes. The first one focused mostly on you know what a heat everything from what a heat pump is, types of heat pumps, what sort of systems you can put in, what sort might be relevant for your house, to incentives and rebates. Right uh, was the second part, and uh, it wasn't. It was all very focused. <laughs> Um, no envelope issues, right? That would have to be a separate 
discussion, which I think is fine. It's something uh, you know, I, I was thinking another uh, in the series on just on saving money. You know, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be called envelope issues. It can be called how to save money this winter, <laughs> right? Things you can do. Um, but again, finding someone to do that is the right hard part. I like the idea. And I think for an hour presentation, 40 minutes of watching and 20 of questions is about a good balance anyway. Um, it worked out well. There were a lot of questions answered. They fielded, I'm sure the recording is probably the full 60 minutes, but we can cut out the last 20 because that was all questions. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a great idea, Lori. I think that was a wonderful presentation and probably worth watching or showing as part of our meeting. Yeah. These guys have been doing it for a while. <laughs> There's another set coming up in November, I think, according to Mike Simons, who wrote back to me. So uh, if I can get a date on that, that would be another possibility just to have everybody in Amherst, you know, advertise that date, go, go to this, or we can do both. Show it and, you know, either way. All right, if there is nothing else uh, there, we're on to, um, now Vasu had suggested doing an education series Jamboard, but because we have no way to share a Jamboard link or a, or a uh, uh, I talked to him about this just before the meeting or even a Google doc link, um, this isn't really something I think we should do during the meeting. So I think perhaps after the meeting, if we can just circulate a link for people to add stuff to, can we do that Stephanie or does that, violate an open meeting law just to have people make entries in a yeah i know that google docs are really it's very clear that committees should not be working on google docs together is at least what i've been told All right. then, um i i think um but I think if it's something that you're all just contributing, as long as there's no deliberation or feedback on what someone's done, if you're just creating something and everyone's adding to it without deliberation, I think that's probably okay, but you should probably get it to me. Like yeah. the feedback should probably go through me somehow. Okay, and the other thing people can do is just you know send your suggestions. And this goes especially for folks in the uh, in the um, audience and the attending, um, you know, if you have suggestions for seminars you'd like to see regarding the energy transition, I guess the thing to do is to send them to Stephanie and Stephanie, if you would forward them to, to me, um, maybe I can just start putting together a document that we can, that I can share on my screen next time. Or if you have a comment afterwards, just share it with us. So the next thing is just items for the next meeting agenda. So far I have a uh, discussion in addition to the usual things that we put on every time, updates, et cetera. Um, setting priorities for the town council and town manager, I think is something we probably need to discuss some more. Um, whether we actually come up with a suggestion or just reroute people to another document that probably needs to be there. Um, or maybe that'll get settled in the next, between now and the next meeting. And then I also had a discussion of the state issues of what, what we can do to advance um, greenhouse gas transition, the, uh, energy transition across the state, either through doing a um, home rule petition or adopting a stretch code or, um, and also the, um, Berkshire gas suggestion, you know, are there other larger issues that we want to recommend to town council to take up? I think that would be a good discussion. Anything else we need for the next agenda? Or it might be the one after if we actually actually have a presentation next time. Um. Yes, I believe Dwayne and I are coming back with our solar um, our solar scenarios for discussion. 
Is that right, Dwayne? Yep, I think um, I, I'm sort of uh, maybe a third of the way through <laughs> what, what I want to um, get some input on um, and get uh, Steve, if uh, just so that your comments on, not deliberate on, but just comment on um, uh, before the meeting. But uh, but yeah, that that's my goal is to have that then available for ECAC discussion next um, next meeting if that if that can work out. Yeah, that's going to be a big discussion. Just things to think about. Yeah, I think if we do end up doing a um, presentation, we probably want it to start at 5.30, which means keeping the meeting compressed to an hour. So maybe we'll change the, you know, try to talk to Vasu about focusing the um, first part of the meeting on one or two topics instead of having the whole usual list of updates. And... All right, and if there's nothing else, I think we're back to public comment. So if anyone from the public would like to make a comment or ask a question, please electronically raise your hand. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone yeah, me neither. raise their hand. So if there are no further comments, I think we're ready to adjourn. And uh, Lori, I, do, I, I know that people want to know how many attendees were in the meeting. So uh, uh, I will note that at one point there were 11. There are nine now and have been for a while, but there were 11 at one point. Right. Okay, so... Move to adjourn, anyone? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. <laughs> I think you're good to adjourn. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Thanks, Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye, folks.